What is going on, everybody? It's Rob Brunson back again for the electronic intervention. This is episode two in two days. Pretty remarkable. Happy NFL Draft Day to all the NFL fans out there. Today, we have a really special guest. We have Bill Petro from Kang Yang USA International. Um, he's going to come on and talk to us about the plastics business and all that good stuff. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring Bill in. Bill, what's going on, man? How are you? Hey, Rob. Thank you for for hosting me today. I appreciate yeah, it. And thank absolutely. you to all everyone watching. Yeah, for sure. And just so you guys know, on the last broadcast, I noticed some comments a little bit late. So if you guys have any questions, comments for Bill, be sure to drop those in there. I actually have the comment tab pulled up this time. It was user error. It was my fault. So if there's any questions, just drop them in there and you know we'll make sure Bill gets to those at some point during the stream. So Bill, what I wanted to do first is let you introduce yourself, kind of tell you, you know, who you are, what it is you do for Kang Yang, and then we'll kind of dive a little bit more into Kang Yang. So tell us what you do. All right. Well, um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Petro. I'm the general manager of Kang Yang International. Uh, we are the North American sales branch for Kang Yang Hardware Enterprises uh, based out of uh, Taiwan. Uh, Kang Yang Hardware Enterprises has been around since 1987, so certainly not, uh, not a new company by any means, but not super old. But um, we here in the States have been here since about 2009, and uh, I am the general manager. We have uh, five people here within our office, and uh, we utilize uh, sales rep companies as well as some direct uh, sales approaches for some key accounts. And um, yeah, we're, we're here selling electronic hardware. Essentially, if you think of uh, when you were all in uh, high school or college and they talked about uh, company A makes widget B, well, we're the widget maker. <laughs> we make the little uh, things that are inside of electronic components uh, that make things work or at least allow them to work. Um, tend to be more mechanical in nature, less electrical, although we do delve into a little bit of electrical or thermal properties or EMI properties, which we'll get into shortly. But um, primarily injection molded plastic parts uh, that uh, support PC boards, hold cable harnesses together, uh, protect cable harnesses, uh, transmit light through light pipes, uh, those types of uh, strange little devices that a lot of consumers don't see but are very critical to the uh, function of electronics today. Great. You're almost making puzzle pieces to build a puzzle, right? Exactly. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Kang Yang and kind of how you got started. Um, you know, I was actually talking to him and Mark, who are my bosses, for those who don't know, I'm sure most of you do. And they kind of told us about your Richco background and how you've been in the plastics market for a while. So tell us a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Yeah. So, um, well, if we go back a little bit further, uh, even before the Richco days, I, I was a component engineer at the old uh, TV company, Zenith Electronics, I used to make TVs. Um, and I used to deal with Richco products, which is now Accentra, um, as a component engineer there. And um, at, at the time, you know, I, I came across Richco products, plastic parts, and we used a ton of them in the TVs. I'm like, well, this is an interesting product. But then down the road, I then became a component engineer for U.S. Robotics, which was the modem manufacturer, and then 3Com. Cool. And uh, after that point, I got a stint uh, as a field sales engineer for Foxconn. I was selling connectors and cable harnesses to Motorola, primarily in Chicago. And then after that, um, I got the opportunity to join Richco, um, and I was their global account manager or multinational account manager, they called it, uh, for about nine years. Uh, primarily calling on the TV Maquila Dora market down near Mexico, uh, Sony, Toshiba, Philips, RCA, when they were still around, uh, right. those were our, our big customers um, in using our types of products. So um, I worked there for about eight or nine years. Awesome group of people to work with. It just uh, at one time, actually, um, I came across the King and catalog on uh, my product manager's desk. And I'm like, oh, my God, look at this. Look at all the stuff in this catalog. If, if this company ever comes to America, we're in trouble. Because <laughs> I'm like, look at all the stuff they make. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. And, you know, initially a lot of it was, you know, me too type business because sure. when uh, uh, manufacturers like Dell, HP, Cisco started building things overseas or designing things overseas, they didn't have a, a rich go over there or an, uh, a Panduit necessarily or a Heiko. Uh, making parts over there. So 
Who was there to pick up the pieces? Well, it was Kang Yang, Pin Good, KSS, these Taiwanese based manufacturers. Right. So initially, well, a lot of it was Me Too type product, but uh, now at this point, uh, we have a full design team in Taiwan uh, that works hand in hand with the designers there and designers here in the States. Cool. So uh, our catalog continues just to grow like crazy, um, <laughs> which is why it's we call it the Bible. Yeah, we um, actually have a stack in our office. We have one, you know, each day. And, you know, I compare them to the Harry Potter novels, right? You know, you get the first Harry Potter novel and it's like that. And then they just get progressively bigger and bigger. So we actually have a stack in our office and they're all different colors and you can see the different dates and they definitely get thicker and thicker every single year. So. They do. They do. Mr. <laughs> King is tr Mr. King in Taiwan there. He's tried to make them thinner, but uh, in fact, the paper got so thin that you can start to see on the other page. So it's like yep. at some point you just... Well, well, I actually have mine in front of me. And what's so cool about it is if you turn to the front, you might be a better position to do this than I am just because I've got a lot of stuff here. But we call it the point and grunt section. Right. It's, so if you're an engineer, what you can do is exactly you can pull it up and it's basically a whole slew of products. And the cool thing is it shows you actually exactly what page it's on. So you can actually have an idea, you know, and this is kind of the way we phrase it to engineers whenever we take the book in and say, look, you know, you kind of know what parts you need, but you don't know what parts you need. But you start scrolling through and you say, oh, that looks cool. Or, hey, that looks cool. And then it takes you right to the page. So one thing about the catalog is it's very big, but it's actually really easy to navigate, which I think is a, uh, a pretty cool function of it. Um, so if it's okay with you, I was going to pull up the website and let's kind of take a look at that. It's kind of a digital catalog, I guess is fair to say. Um, but let's just take a look at it and you can kind of walk everyone through it and you can just tell me where to go and uh, we can take a look at any of the products you want to or, you know, there is a place to download the, uh, the catalog for anyone watching if you want one. And we learned it's actually not that big of a file because I thought it was going to be huge and it's not that big. It's not gigabytes, it's megabytes. So <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, a victory. <laughs> definitely easy to download. We welcome everybody to download the catalog. And of course, uh, reach out to us uh, or our rep agencies directly. Actually, why don't you pull up our sales rep map there? Okay, cool. And that'll show you kind of uh, just a, a general map of uh, the United States along with the rep agencies that we have uh, located in each location. And there's our, our friendly Wallace Electronic sales team right on top there. They are. And the Carolinas. And um, yep, you just click and point and it directs you to the right contact. So, Bill, we're going to have to talk about this just for one thing because I'm a South Carolina guy and I'm a huge South Carolina boy. So we get, we might have to change this Clemson orange uh, from our, from our colors here, we can even compromise and go Duke blue or something for Mark. But you know the Clemson orange, John Hasek probably loves it. But other than that, you know, we see, might I, see, to... I see that as as Hemi orange. You know, okay, Hemi. there you go. We'll we'll take that. That's right. that's fair. That's fair. Be happy. So, um, we'll get back to the products. Um, yep. And you know, there's a lot. Um, well, actually, I'll get back to the homepage because I think it does a little better job of of showing the product specifically. So talk to us about some of these. What are some of the things you see the most of, um, some of the things that you've seen the most success with? And then I kind of want to talk about, if it's okay, Kang Yang's tooling capabilities and the things that you guys sure. are able to do. Sure. So essentially, um, I would say our, our most popular categories would be the first one there, cable management. Sure. Uh, basically, if you have wires or, or cables within an electronic device, then you need to route it away from a hot component spinning component like a fan or just to protect the cable um, we offer cable management clips that either snap into a pc board or metal panel or can be taped on with a special uh, tape from 3m nitto or whatever company you feel most comfortable with right. uh, to provide secure uh, cable connection or ca cable retention um, so cable management is, is one of our top categories and then also pcb supports uh, yeah, probably a little bit further down. Yeah, PC board hardware on the yeah, lower right left. Here. Yep. yep, yep. And um, again, we offer those in all different types of styles and shapes, whether it's a push-in or a, a snap-in design or an adhesive-based, uh, as well as a screw-in threaded type uh, PCB hardware as well. Great. Um, fan mounts are kind of interesting. Actually, that's the first product line that we uh, just recently launched on DigiKey. Yes. Um, uh, we... We started there because we wanted to walk before we ran in terms of getting a bunch of products on, on DigiKey to advertise sure. and, and, and help the design community. Uh, but fan mounts are are neat because they, they're not just made of 
you know, our competitors typically make them out of like a traditional silicone rubber or a, or a standard TPE. Ours actually have a anti-vibration compound in them. And there's a little uh, black bulb demo kit that we include with all of our sample kits. Um, and what I do is I take the, the black ball and drop it on the table. And the traditional rubber ball will bounce all over the place. Right. Or you can drop our ball down with the anti-vibration compound and then it just stops. It's almost like there's a, a magnet on the table. It always impresses people. Oh yeah, that's definitely really cool. So talk to everyone really quick about BISIT or BASIT. You know, I still haven't figured out correctly how to pronounce that and HFC um, and then JDD Tech as well, because that's kind of an interesting part of Kang Yang that some people may know about, some people may not know about. Correct, correct. So um, actually when I left uh, my old company, Richco in 2009, I primarily left for Kang Yang for the plastics hardware business, sure. but also um, HFC approached me as well because we had some dealings with them a little bit in the early days of Richco. I tried to get uh, Richco to bring them on as a supplier, but it was not able to do so for EMI gaskets and thermal pads. Um, we don't have them really displayed well on our website yet, Rob, but we're going to be adding that product line. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, HFC does the thermal pads and EMI gaskets um, for the electronics market. And then BASIT is another supplier that we work with that does the cable glands. Uh, IP68 rated, won't let, won't let moisture in with the IP68 rating. So it's, it's basically a device that uh, takes the, a cable going from the outside world to an inside enclosure, whether it be a control panel, uh, could be a lighting fixture and it prevents water from getting in as well as providing strain relief on the cable. Um, so basically we're, we added those lines to our product line complementary um, to compete against uh, others in the market that offer similar products. Sure, and the cool thing, one thing, the HFC little folder catalog that you guys have that's almost laminated, that's a really great catalog just because when you open it up, everything inside is touchable. You know, you can feel and you kind of get that tactical feeling of exactly what the EMI filter looks like or what the gasket feels like. Um, and, and it obviously has the specs as well. It's, it's, it's one of the cooler catalogs that we have. Um, yep. So I guess one thing that I would really like to touch on, because this really separates, you know, Kang Yang from a lot of people, and that's the ability to do customs, number one, and the ability to tool products. And I, if you don't mind, kind of touch on a little bit how you guys keep adding to this catalog, <laughs> right? Because they kind of all walk hand in hand a little bit, right? Sure, sure. So that's one place that we separate ourselves from, I think some of our larger competitors is that uh, many times if there's a particular size or a shape or something that's not quite right for the mechanical engineer, um, we will ask the engineer enough questions and say, okay, if, if the quantity is decent or if it's something that we could potentially put in our catalog, Sometimes we either split the tooling costs or sometimes we absorb the whole tooling cost and right. we allow uh, we make parts for the customer at no charge. Uh, typically, the initial uh, T1 tool samples, we get those approved and then uh, it becomes a real part and it just continually adds to our catalog. Uh, Mr. King is an engineer, the owner of the company uh, by trade, and uh, he's the type who he, he doesn't want to save paper. He wants to keep adding to the catalog. And I, I kind of, in the same way, I'm like, hey, if you have a tool for a product, why would you pull it from the catalog just because it doesn't sell this year? Right. There's Joe, Joe Engineer out there is going to be looking for something. Maybe in a couple of years, you could sell a million of them. And you never in know. many cases, that's worked out for us that way. So. It's yeah, it's a, it's a really cool feature. And one of the things, you know, the cool story that we have is we had a manufacturer who they had an issue. And I think you know this story. Um, I'm sure you do. And it's Mark's. It, it, Mark actually worked on this. And the issue was that they had this adhesive and it was for cable management purposes. And they were sticking it on this metal, you know surface and the adhesive wasn't stained properly. And then, you know, one of the issues was, you know, Kenny was right-handed and he was six foot two. And then Joe was five foot five and left-handed. So it was getting spaced out everywhere. So one of the solutions that you guys provided was actually a push through cable mount that, you know, the manufacturer could actually, the OEM could put holes where they wanted it to. So the assembly is the same way every single time and you avoid having to, you know, use that adhesive. So just kind of, it's a great example for me of kind of, you know, how we have forward thinking and actually can really provide solutions uh, to, to OEMs. It, it, it's a really good story. Um, 
So I wanted to talk to you about the elephant in the room, right? That everyone's been talking about for, you know, the last 13, 14, 15 months, and that's COVID, right? Um, so I guess it's it's a three-part question and we it's a, it's, a, it's a decent amount to unpack, but we can go through it as slow as we need to. So really, you know, what challenges has Kang Yang faced since COVID? And I think, you know, one of the piggyback questions I would say coming out of COVID, we're seeing struggles with supply chain across the board. Is that something that Kang Yang's dealing with and how are you guys dealing with it? Yeah, so I'll go first with the supply chain issues. Certainly uh, right now we're seeing uh, definitely increased lead times uh, coming sure. out of Asia. Um, so our main factory for the US market, North American market, I should say, including Mexico and Canada, uh, has been the Taiwan plant. Uh, unfortunately, uh, right after Chinese New Year and at, due to COVID backlog and Chinese New Year right. backlog, manufacturers over there started getting, um, or subcontractors, the big subcontractors started to get wind of uh, resin shortages uh, precipitated also by the Texas power issues right? Uh, with the refineries. And there's certain components that make parts of the nylon substrates or subcomponents, sub chemical materials. And uh, so we got, they got wind of it. So then instead of placing typical orders of the 500K variety, they were getting 3 million piece orders or 6 right. million piece orders. So they were basically buying a years of products rather than months of products. Um, so what has happened is that's pushed our traditional lead times, which has been awesomely competitive in the market, four to, four to five weeks typical. I can now, confirm. Yeah, this is now <laughs> now pushing out to 15, 16, sometimes 24 weeks. Right. And try try to explain to somebody that a six or seven cent clip can't be had and you shut down their production line because of, uh, you know, lead time on resin. But unfortunately, uh, that's the situation we're facing right now. Um, we've managed to work with brokers. Uh, sure. Obviously, we, we've had to increase pricing in many cases, but uh, we've been able to work through many, many of the urgent, urgent need ones where uh, we've kept our customers running. So Absolutely. that has been challenging. Um, yeah, we're seeing that to, across the board too, you know, just with copper pricing and component shortages as a whole, um, you know, lead times and pricing are going up effectively in every market. Right. And and we're as reps, you know, we have, we're juggling eight balls, you know, at one time. So we're seeing that across the board in a ton of different industries. So I think that's really good insight, you know, on the, on the plastics industry and something that maybe and not a lot of people have thought about or considered. Um, so thanks for sharing that. Um, so sorry, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt you, but I just thought that was, that was really important. So anyways, back to the COVID stuff, what were, what were the main challenges for you guys with the COVID? Um, I think for us, uh, it's the not having the face-to-face -face connection and visits with customers like we used to. Um, sure. I mean, that was that's where our product uh, kind of needs the support of a direct approach. Um, to us, people can buy some of these widgets anywhere, whether it be through um, distribution, which we partner with through distribution as well, but it can be bought through any other competitor company. So the difference here is creating and, and forming that relationship of trust and uh, providing the service levels that are expected. Uh, and uh, when you can't visit the customer or you can't reconnect with them, uh, no matter how many Zoom calls or go-to meetings you have, it's just not right. the same uh, as being there. So fortunately, we we our 2020 actually ended up uh, above 2019, oddly enough. Oh, that's great. And, and we're off to a good start for 2021. So I think we did enough of the right things in the past few years previous right. to this that we're getting enough residual but um right now it is a little bit challenging i, I actually just got back from uh, a business trip to mexico and i kind of nice. did a, a sneaky way to get down there and i, I met with customers <laughs> i met with customers <laughs> it's mexico <laughs> yeah, that's fine i, no, I love stories like this <laughs> yeah no it was it was great and and you know Basically, I flew into San Diego and then just drove across instead of having to fly directly from Chicago to Mexico. So I avoided Great. having to get the COVID test to, to come sure. back across. Great. But it worked. It's, it's a cool story. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we might have to do a live stream on that just and you tell us that story and we'll kind of like make a little documentary about it, like a five that minute sounds, documentary. Sounds like fun. <laughs> um, so obviously because of COVID, this is a, another kind of part of the question, you know, Obviously, technology changed your processes during COVID. Has technology? Do you think that technology moving forward is going to change the way you do things long term? Take the here and now and the short term out of it. But long term, how do you see technology playing a role for Kang Yang moving forward? 
Uh, yeah, I think I think we're just going to have to delve a little bit deeper into platforms like Teams, for example, um, sure. or or some of those more advanced. Uh, I think Teams might be one of the frontliners because they offer also some sort of uh, project or CRM type management as well, which um, we were looking to do anyway. But at the same time, if we can integrate that uh, project tracking Teams approach as well as customer interfaces um, into one platform, it could be very interesting for us. I agree. Yeah, I think technology is here to stay. This is kind of something that we talk about. You know, it's when things like this happen, there are certain force multipliers that occur that you just never revert back to to the old ways of doing some things. You know, um, sometimes the old ways are better and those will come back. But I think Teams meetings and Zooms meetings are really effective personally. And I think they're going to be here to stay for quite some time. So I agree with you completely on that. Now, this is like I told Scott on the last interview. This is big J journalism here, Bill. So I asked tough questions. <laughs> All right. All right. So one of the tough questions I want to ask is to you, what is a leader and why is leadership so important in today's world and in business? Uh, well, to me, to me, a leader uh, is someone who uh, can identify uh, the right people to work for the team, as well as uh, be able to trust them with more of a hands off approach with guidance here and there to make subtle corrections. Uh, one thing that I, I learned early on is um, whenever I'm doing interviews or I'm looking for somebody to join my team, uh, I'm looking for people who are better than me. Right. There's a lot of people out there like that. <laughs> yeah. So so I always look for people better than me. I don't want, you know, if somebody has an idea better than me, then that's awesome because I want that because it's only going to make me better as well and in the organization better. Sure. So, so to me, it was very critical. We have a small team here in Chicago, right. but uh, it was very important to hire the right people. And, and I couldn't be more proud of the team that we have here. Yeah. And I'll vouch for that. Y'all's team is incredible. Um, I'm going to give Scott a shout out. You know, Scott in front of customers is one of the best manufacturers we have. And he's really fun to travel with. You know, we <laughs> had we had a lot of fun just driving around in my car and in, in downtown in North Carolina. And it was a good time. And he's great. So I completely agree with you on that on that statement. It takes a lot to say, hey, you know, this person is better than me at this. And it's really, you know, to me, you know, to piggyback on that, it's it's getting everyone in what I call being a star in your role, right? So if you're great at this and someone else is not so good at that, that's okay as long as that person is a complete star in their role and does what they do well at a high level all the time. So I think that's a great answer and I couldn't agree more um, with you on that. Um, so moving on, I want to ask, all right, so I'm 30, you know, I look like I'm like 50. I know you're older than me and you look younger than I do. I don't know if it's because you're tan and I'm really pale. I don't know what it is, but you, you look a lot younger. Than me. <laughs> so telling someone who's a young person like me, why should they get into the sales industry? Why should they get into the hardware industry? What's cool about it? What do you really like about it? Well, I mean, uh, obviously, with the uh, the COVID thing, that takes away a little bit of the sales aspect of it in terms sure. of visiting people and connecting with people. But uh, I still think we'll get back to a portion of that soon. Um, for me, it's it's uh, making the connections and the relationships with people and seeing how our world works uh, at a microcosm level. I mean, we're seeing how our components are affecting bigger bigger things or bigger, more high ticket items. But right. we are part of the supply chain and, and from raw materials to finished product, we're in the middle of it. Um, right. So I feel like um, you can be part of something that uh, you touch and feel and you connect with every day. And uh, it's, it's exciting to be both uh, part of a, a project where you can see the, see the end product or, or know where it goes. Right. But also be, because our product is used in so many di diverse industries, uh, you, you get educated on all these industries too. So it opens up potentials uh, in other markets for you down the road. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've enjoyed it so far. You know, I've only been doing this for about a year and nine months. Who's really counting there, right? Um, but it's been, it's been a lot of fun for me. And I basically walked in the door and six months later, COVID hit. And I'm still having a great time. 
Um, so I, I, I agree with you. I, th I think that's a really good point. So what I wanted to do really quick is just have some fun, talk about some personal things that you're into. And then at the end of this, I would really like just to circle back to the Kang Yang website, just so we can kind of move through it one more time really quick. So people know where they can go to, to get solutions and things like that. Um, first I want to talk to you about food, right? So what is your favorite food in the world? I'll, you tell me yours and then, and then I'll tell you mine. Hmm. I like breakfast foods. Ooh, that's good. All right. Pancakes or waffles? Uh, I'm more of an omelet eggs kind of okay. meat kind of guy. So oh, that's yeah. That's even better. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I would say bre breakfast. I just love going out for breakfast and, and, uh, my poor wife, Trisha, every time uh, it's breakfast time, I'm like, yeah, I, I appreciate your cooking, but let's go out to eat. And hey, like, no, it's, no. it's tough to find. It's it's really tough to beat a really good brunch spot. Like if you can find a yeah. really good brunch spot that's doing like Eggs Benedict or something like that, man, that's tough to beat. Yes. Um, totally. I love crab cake. Stratas are awesome. Um, we, ha we actually used to eat this dish called country fried chicken. And they called it chicken fried chicken. It was mashed potatoes, fried okra, a giant mm. chicken breast, and some gravy, just milk gravy. But it was still really good. Um, so that was awesome. My favorite nice. food is we we make this dish at my house, which is black and duck penne gorgonzola. So it's it's obviously penne pasta, and we make a gorgonzola cream sauce with pancetta and asparagus, and then we do a black and duck, cook it medium rare. Um, ah. Nice. And then we eat that. It's 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 really good. So I'm going to bring up a picture and I want you to kind of explain this. I want to go ahead and give you a disclaimer. I know very little about cars. So I, you're going to get to educate me on some of this stuff, which I'm actually pretty excited about. I have one friend who's a car guru. His name's Slade and he's brilliant. Um, so I'm going to bring this up and let you explain it to everybody. Oh, okay. That's my car. Yep. Yep. That's your car. So tell us about this car and tell us about, you know, what it is and, and what you've done in it. <laughs> Cause I think it's really cool. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, it's a 64 Plymouth Fury, uh, four door hardtop. So what's kind of unique about it is there's four doors. It was important for me to get a four door because, uh, I'm a family man. I like to bring the family out for drives. There you go. Uh, but, but when you roll down the windows, there's no uh, post between the two doors, which is kind of unique. So it looks pretty sleek when all the windows are rolled down. It's called sure. a four-door hardtop. Um, so it's a little rare in that aspect. Um, and I, I wanted to, to go fast. I'm a little bit of a gearhead. So um, I did modifications to the engine, the transmission, and everything. And I'm like, what better car to do it in but a four-door? Because when you throw money away at a race car, you might as well just be burning it. So it's like, why, right. why put it? In, why put money into a two-door where I can make money off of it? Let's let's throw more money into the fire and do a four-door. There you go. <laughs> So it's kind of a sleeper. You know, I, I, I give it kind of a, a mild look. It doesn't have fancy wheels on it. It's got like factory rims, but um, it runs really strong. I got about 750 horsepower uh, that runs on 93 octane. Okay. And then I've got a 300 horsepower nitrous kit on top of that. So it'll make about 1050. That's awesome. How fast do you go from zero to 60 in that bad boy? You know, I haven't timed it, but on the quarter mile, it'll do uh, 940 at 145. Okay. Uh, you so, so Steve Hatfield, who I know, you know, Steve, he's really big into racing and cars like that. So oh, he, cool. he's probably, I know he's watching this right now. So I know he thinks this is super cool. Um, <laughs> I got a couple other pictures I wanted to pull up um, of it. So there's one. So yeah. tell, where is this? This looks like it's on a race track. It is a Great Lakes Dragway, Union Grove, Wisconsin. That's my home track. And uh, yeah, okay. that's a, a good run of me just uh, starting to hit the nitrous uh, and it's pulling the front tires up off the ground there. Yeah. Got some good traction with those slicks. Yeah. So, and here's, I got, there's another picture of it, which I think is a really good side profile of it. Yeah. Is, so that shows the windows all rolled down and then the, I redid the interior on it. Yeah. And, uh, that looks great. Yep. Really cool. Really cool. Thank you. So that's Thank really you. cool. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, so it's, it's I was, fun. I was talking to Scott one time and um, he isn't there. I don't remember. And he might kill me for this, but it's either a motorcycle or a car shop that's relatively close to y'all's office. And, oh, a, a custom car shop. Yeah. Okay. Hilarious. So it's a car shop because he sent me oh. um, some pictures of some cars. Uh, for whatever reason, I couldn't remember if they were cars or motorcycles, but that's probably pretty cool. I mean, 
So. Oh yeah, the Voodoo Larry is the is the name of the shop. He's a uh, Larry <laughs> is a is a custom <laughs> customizer for like doing chop chop mercs and customs and street rods, mostly uh, the the culture, you know, the custom culture. And uh, it, it just so happened that the building I I chose for our company happened to be next to him. I don't know what happened. It just you know things, things work out that way. There is such thing as serendipity. You know what I mean. <laughs> So I'm going to pull back up the website and I just want us to run through it one more time. So anyone who's watching this, if they have any yeah. questions or they want to check out any of your products, they'll know where to go. So again, guys, sure. it's Kang Yang dot. So it's, excuse me, Kang Yang dash USA.com. Um, and that's where you want to go. Cause I'm pretty sure the Kang Yang dot com might be a little tough for people in America to read. Um, yeah, that goes to the Taiwan site. Uh, however, yeah. there are links to our site from the Taiwan site as well. Um, okay. We're still in the process of building some things out and fixing some things as most sure. websites are. Um, but if you ever run into a problem, we have a, a box if you scroll further down where you can contact us. Uh, as well as request uh, samples, quotes, uh, even if you want a, uh, a 3D file, we typically yep. get that back to you within the same day or the next day. Yep. And I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this because I know there are supply chain shortages, but sometimes you guys do have the stock in Chicago. Um, Correct. That That is something that happens sometimes. Um, it's probably a little different now, but you know, I know in the past, even in the last couple months, a lot of the things that you guys offer, you guys do have some sample stock that you'll be able to provide for people. Another thing that I think is important is guys, if you guys want a catalog, you guys can reach out to me. Um, obviously you can go up to the sales rep tab, which we covered earlier and reach out to any of your reps. They should all have those catalogs. And I think it's fair to say, right, Bill, they can contact you directly. And if they want some samples or you guys to drop ship them some catalogs, you can do that as well. Um, yeah, and so that's can, one thing I wanted to share as well is, is we're very generous with our samples. Uh, definitely. As, uh, like, um, like the previous gentleman who presented yesterday, uh, Quell, yeah, yep. Quell. Um, we give a we we give away our samples too. I mean, our our parts are even cheaper, but we don't want to delay the process of getting them into engineers' hands uh, by right. waiting for a PO. Uh, that by the time you process it, it costs more than the parts worth. So, right, we, we are very generous with our samples. Uh, typically, fifty pieces, a hundred pieces, no problem. Sometimes even a bag of a thousand if you need it for a, a, an important build. We are sure. willing to work with you on that. And another great thing that you guys offer is sample kits and the sample kits are really, really good guys. I mean, it's got pretty much everything on this homepage, um, you know, cable management, caps and plugs, LED products that, you know, you only get one or two, but you can at least touch it, feel it, see what it looks like, which we know engineers really like. So that's something uh, that we as reps can provide to you and Ken Yang can provide to you as well. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely check it out. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, you guys can either drop them in the questions below, reach out to any of us, all of our information is available. So cool. You got anything else, Bill, you want to add? Uh, no, no. It's just like, like you mentioned with the sample kits, uh, we will ship those out as well. Uh, we also have some design brochures and things yep. that kind of give you a flavor for the company. We're trying to do more, you know, to get back a little bit to the COVID situation. Um, we're trying to get more into some LinkedIn advertising. Liz uh, in the office here has been helping and Mike as well uh, for the marketing aspect of it. Uh, so yeah, if, if you need kits, samples or catalogs, hit us up for it. We're more than happy to uh, send you what you need. For sure. For sure. Well, great. I think this has been a lot of fun. I appreciate you taking, you know, 30 minutes of your time and jumping on here with me. I know everyone's really busy. Um, so again, if you guys have any questions, be sure to hit Bill up on LinkedIn. You guys can reach out to me or your manufacturer's representatives anywhere throughout the country or heck, even in Mexico. And we'll be able to help you guys out and, uh, and get you the solutions that you need. So thanks, Bill. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining. I appreciate it. Take care. All right. Thanks everyone so much for watching the stream. It's Rob Brunson with Wallace Electronic Sales. We want to provide you and your company with quality and competitive solutions. We don't care if you're a small OEM, a medium-sized OEM, or a large OEM. We have solutions that we can provide to everybody. Feel free to drop me an email at rob.brunson at west-inc.com. Again, that's Rob Brunson at west-inc.com. You can also check out our full OEM line card on our website, and that's at west inc Inc.com. Again, that's at west-inc.com. Thanks so much again for watching the stream, and we look forward to talking to you soon.